All right, so what time do you think you'll come by? All right. I look forward to seeing you, man. Bye-bye. That's Ernie Francis Sr. from Breathless Racing up in Fort Lauderdale. He's bringing Ernie Francis Jr. down to look at cars, and they want to race me. That guy's like the two times Trans Am champion. The kid, yeah. Yeah, I've seen him race a couple times. You're going to lose. Come on, he's a kid. He's a high school kid. He's not going to beat me. He beats everybody. And I'll be You're him. not a little spring chicken anymore. And if you're so good, why'd you lose to uh, Robin and... Uh, the tractor race and all that other stuff the last time you raced. You're not very good at it. I only bet 50 grand on the tractor like, race. Oh, shit, it's 50 grand. And then you lost uh, to Robin uh, racing. Uh, uh, I don't really like talking about the... that. There's got to be a time when I win. Yeah, not this time. Let's wait till they get here. We'll see what happens. All right. No good. problem. Good. I got this. I got a phone in my car and I'm on the run. I know what it takes to be number one. And I'll be riding high when the day is done. I'm just out here having fun. I've been buying, selling, and trading classic cars for 40 years. I work here with my beautiful wife, Robin, and we have a great team. Some people call it work, but for us, it's a whole lot more. I'm Ted Vernon, and this is my place, South Beach Classics. Yeah. Get too close to my belly. You're right behind me, man. Don't worry about it. I'm planning on staying behind you for very long. Ernie Francis Jr. Yep. Yeah, I think my dad called you. Yeah, he did. Uh, look at some uh, classic cars today. Yeah. Uh, I heard cool. you're a pretty fast driver. Yeah, I'm a two-time Trans Am champion, so I'm pretty quick. That's a lot. Yeah. Won a fair amount of races. I hear you uh, lost a few. Yeah, Robin beat me, uh, in case that's what you're referring to. So you lost with a car and you lost with some farm equipment. What makes you think you could beat me? Oh, I need a nice, wise guy like you this morning. <laughs> Start my day off right, Ernie. Yeah, let's nice. Go. Yeah. Let me show you some cool cars. He's a cocky little guy, isn't he? Kid comes in and uh, he says, you know, you lost the tractor race, you lost the race to your wife. He's going to be in for something. I'll show him. And here's an example of a car that looks fast, but it's slow. It's a 67 Camaro. All right? It looks pretty quick. Yeah, but it, your, your minivan today can beat this car. Oh, man. Yeah, what like, went wrong with it? Why'd they make it so slow? They just, you know, that was the way it was back then. This was zero to 60 in probably eight and a half seconds. I, mean, I can almost run faster than that. We'll see how fast you are later. Yeah, we'll see. But that's, that's your typical older car. That was, that was quick for its day. Anyway, yeah, well, I'm glad they uh, made them a lot quicker when my Camaro finally came around. Well, your Camaro's a different story. He has some cool cars here, but they're definitely not fast by my standards. I personally uh, really like Camaros. I have a Camaro as my street car, but that Camaro is just not fast enough for me. I got a call from Jimmy Cephalo and Joe Rose. Great guys, radio personalities, TV personalities. Jimmy played for the Miami Dolphins back in the Marino days. Joe Rose is a terrific guy. I worked some charity gigs with him. I wrestled with him. He's, he's just a fun character. They're doing a show about uh, food and driving and cars. And they want to buy a car, and then they want to trade it and get more cars. We'll get something done. Those guys don't play anymore. We're doing a pilot of our show, which Joe and I, we've got different ideas about food, what we like, what we don't. He likes beer, I like wine. And we're going to drive around South Florida. We need a beautiful classic car to go around. The budget is $25,000. Now, don't tell Ted that that's the budget. Because no, he's no, we're going to try to go under. No, yeah, he's a pro. He's been doing this for a long time. I know. You told me before, don't mention the 25. Right. I've known Ted a long time. This is the first time I've actually had to negotiate with the guy, but there's got to be something we can get. You looking for a two-seater? That's all we need. Are you going to be able to fit in a two-seater? Well, let's see. I mean, we got to try something. I need a little bit of room, but give me a convertible cruising down in South Beach. This would be great. Hey. Hey, Joe. Hello, partner. How you doing, man? Yeah, long time no see, you really? crazy son of a gun. It's good to see you. Jimmy Cephalo. <laughs> Hi, Jimmy. Nice good to, to see meet you. you. How's, How's everything? I'm good. I'm good. Great. This is good, man. You're doing good. And I got stars here. This is good. This is my day. <laughs> Thank you, man. Well, we're, we're looking for a car. We're going to be doing a, a show where we're going to be driving around looking uh, at uh, different restaurants. And so the production company sent us over. Joe, what did you decide we wanted? Convertible, something red. Just cool that when you're cruising around South Florida on a nice day. Oh, I, I got that car. What you got? What, what, what is this? Oh, that's nice. Well, This is an Everett Morrison car. Joe, see if you fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> okay. Joe, don't hurt anything important oh. now, pal. Don't want to pull my groin or anything. No, you want yeah. to? Yeah, hey, Ted, this might be a little tight. What, what's the price on this, Ted? Like 42.5. 
Yeah, you know, this thing doesn't fit well at all, actually. I don't, <laughs> I don't think that's not a work. good fit at all, that yeah. you mention it. Yeah. Jimmy, I think we can find something else. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think we're going to have to. A little Joe. more in our price range, if no, you know what I mean. Yeah, but. You need a crane? Whew, Joe, how are you going to get out of the damn <laughs> Well, I'm going to need a few minutes. <laughs> I got it. You got, I got it? it? You got it. I got it. You know, I see you have convertible taste. Yeah. But I think you get hard top budget. Maybe you're right. You might be right. Maybe I am right. Maybe yeah. you hit it right on the head. Yeah. yeah. This is beautiful. The Mustang. It's nice. Ah, that's nothing wrong hey, with Joe, that. Hey, Joe, this might that's work. That's nice. It's really a nice car, very original car. You're going to have to sit in the back seat to fit in this, Joe. I'm telling you. 289 V8, high performance, automatic. Nice. AC. Oh, man, this is comfortable. Yeah, yeah. It is. Oh, and these are nice. Ends. I was kind of sold on the convertible before, but that's a great way to go, and there's plenty of room. I just want to be comfortable driving around town, yeah. and having that extra space to get this large noggin in there is important. Let's start at, like, 12.5, all right? We got $6,000 to play with. Maybe we get it for 15. That's great. Let's do that. They've zeroed in on a Mustang I got, a nice coupe. Well, the car is 18.5. It's really priced very fairly. For me to make money, it's got to be 15, 16 grand just to get out. She's nice. She's beautiful. But what do you got for us price wise, my man? 18 and a half will make you laugh. We need some extra money, though, for beer, a little wine, a little fun here in South we got Florida. Some left over. I mean, man, we might take you with us to have a little fun how, with it. How's 16 grand grab you? How about 15? Will you go? I got the feeling that. This is going to be a revolving door that we'll be changing and trading yeah. and having new cars for the show and blah, blah, blah. So it doesn't hurt me to be gentle with you. Well, Great. you see, this is this is Joe's idea, the, 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 you know, the red, the, 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 the Mustang. I can't believe he gave we'll, in on that, we'll, that we'll get the up red. To, we'll get up to a Rolls or cool. something as we yeah. go. Yeah, we'll that's figure that out. I'm not happy with the deal financially, but I'm happy that I sold a car to those two guys. They want to have a car and periodically change it. And, you know, they're not going to go anywhere but here. If the show is successful that they're doing, I think the next car ought to be a convertible, something that would really be cool for Florida. We came to the right place, found the right guy, and got the right car. I was surprised he came down that much. I think the car is fantastic. I've known Ted a long time. I love to be around him. I love that bald head he has, and he's got great cars. My buddy Rennie's coming down today. He's a guy I used to service my Beamers, some of my Mercedes, and definitely my Rolls. He wants to look at my cars and talk cars. This is the one with the Triumph motor in it. They were much Rennie. better with the chrome. Ted. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Good, brother. How you doing? I came down to see Ted's place. We've been doing business for years. And I brought Shannon along because she loves cars, too. She's really... Japanese Z car kind of a girl, but she likes all the other English cars as well. Ted's got some great stories about cars, so I came down here to, uh, to shoot the crap with Ted and, and see what he's got and hear some more stories. You know, it's funny, with all these cars, they all have a personality. The people that buy them have a personality, the cars have a personality. Yeah, some of them are a little more psycho than other personalities, though, especially British cars like this one. Oh, are you talking about the Prince of Darkness? Joe Lucas. Yeah. You know, your British cars, until recently, were powered by Lucas Electric. And, you know, you have to rewire them. Lucas Electric didn't work. If you spend enough time and money, you can cure them for a while. De Lucas them. You can put a Japanese starter on it, Japanese alternator. That helps him a lot. And it won't break. He knows a lot about cars. He knows what makes them tick, what makes them run, and how to fix them the right way. He's good at what he does. I've been showing Ernie some cars that look fast but aren't fast to him, and I don't think he was very impressed at all. Here's a car that looks fast but wasn't. Well, I mean, it may have looked fast in its day, but it doesn't look too fast anymore. Well, yeah. you know, that was its day. And yeah, that's why it's not fast. They have no motor in this thing. Well, it's a I mean, look, look at all this. Commando. Look at all the space in here. They couldn't have fit like a 427 or something yeah, in this could've. thing. Well, they did some of them. But this is the smaller motor. But I just drove it down from Georgia. Yeah. No problem. Highway speed, 75, 80, all the way down. I'm surprised we got there. Don't be a wise guy. The uh, Barracuda sounds pretty cool. It's a cool name for a car, but you pop the hood, and it's a tiny little engine inside there. They could have fit something way bigger. That's what they decided, and uh, they made the car pretty slow. So it looks pretty quick. So did we finally uh, find a car that can break eight seconds? No. Not yet? Not even close. Well, let's keep this looking. Is a, this is a tugboat. All right, well, then we need to keep on looking. I got to find something.
Philip Buchanan called me. He's an author, an ex-NFL player. He wants to buy a high-end luxury car, something he's very insistent that won't depreciate. You know, it's funny because I deal with a lot of athletes. Some of these guys will spend $100,000 customizing a car, and then I'll buy it for 20. So their investment really pays off for me. Philip is uh, sounds like a really smart guy. He sounds like he knows what he wants. He just has to see the right car, and I'll buy it. How you doing? I called you earlier, Philip Buchanan. Philip Buchanan. Former NFL player with the Oakland Raiders. That's right. And I'm also an author, too, so I just created a book called New Money Staying Rich. I'm just trying to give advice and help guys understand that making better decisions with their money so they don't blow all their money. Yeah, you're yeah. a bright guy. No, yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned to me you were looking for something in a luxury car, and you said something that won't depreciate. I'm tired of buying cars that drop down 20 to 30 percent, which is dropping a lot. Right off the line. Yeah, so I, I don't sell that kind of car. I sell cars that go up, not down. If I get a car, I'll show you that fits the bill. I got something really special, really beautiful, will hold its value, and I think in the next five years, will double. So let's go check it out. Come on. New cars actually depreciate. As soon as you drive with a lot, it's, it's, it actually depreciates 20, 20 to 30 percent. So what's the point of buying something that does not help you in value? You want to be able to keep your money. But when you get a classic car, it stands for something. So that's why I'm here today. I want to buy a nice car, maybe some old vintage type of Rolls Royce car, or something that definitely holds value, that emulates my personality, that stands for what I stand for. Hmm. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. This is rolling artwork. This is a 1965 Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud III, which is the last of its type. It's all Connolly leather. It's been redone recently. It's, it's an amazing, amazing car. Just really is amazing car. So you sit in the back and you want to write, it's all proper wood. Every piece of wood is from the same tree, matched. They say in the factory, they have extra pieces of the wood in case you ever need it. Are you confident in the appreciation? Because appreciation is my middle name, so I need to know. Without a question, this car is going to go up every single year. It's the nicest Cloud 3 I've ever had. So I talked to my mentor, and he told me the Rolls Royce Civil Cloud 3 is a good buy. So it's been going up in value for the last 15 years. If I can get anywhere close to 90, 91, or 92, I'll be fine with that. I'll probably offer him 75 to 85. I'm gonna start at 75. You can start hitting the bricks, my brother. I am not selling this car for 75 grand in a million years. It ain't happening. This car's worth every penny of 96 and a half. So you won't take 75? Right? I won't take 80 either, and I won't take 85. So try to be serious with me. Let's make a deal. You seem confident that the value is very strong. You know, it would definitely appreciate over the years. There is no question a car like this will appreciate. These cars are off the charts at appreciation. I think I can uh, bump my price. I'd say probably about. 90. At least you're getting in the right area code now. You're not insulting me anymore. 92 grand and you own the car. I can probably agree to doing it in 92. I think we get the deal done. Sure, car. Congratulations. Appreciate I'm happy it. for you, appreciate man. That's great. This is great. And by the way, when you're done with it, if you get tired of it, just come back and sell it back to me because this is a car that is going up and I'd like to have it. You know what, Ted? I like your style. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'm straight up, bro. Okay. Simple as that. Yeah. Great car. I'm going to miss it. It feels good to get a new car and I love buying things that, that actually holds value. It's definitely an investment, and that's why you gotta try to invest smart and make sure that you know, you're doing the right things, and at the same time, you can have fun with it. This just came in yesterday. Oh, last of the Super Beast. Yeah, 73. 73. Let's see what it's got for power. 440 Magnum, brother. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these are the last of the bunch. These are the low compression 440s. Where did the, the, the title Super B come from? It was a Dodge factory uh, option on the cars. You could get the regular Charger or the Super B. These are pretty front heavy, not good handlers. No, but they could fly. Oh yeah, in a straight line. This is oh. king, man. The Mopar is the way to go. Certain cars had different problems. When you sell 50, 60, 70 year old cars, you can't expect the buyer to get in it and drive to New York in it. They weren't as reliable as new cars are then. There's your C3 1980 Corvette. Yep. You got your T-tops. Oh yeah. Sure pain in the butt. Yeah, they were horrible. They leaked. They cracked, they made a glass version of these too. Yeah, but those broke right away. Yeah. But I've driven down the road with these a few times and had the T-tops fly off while I'm driving. <laughs> yeah, nice. Nice. That's, a, that's not a bug, that's a feature. Is that it? That's factory, <laughs> isn't it? Back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, I think the American cars, your Cadillacs, your Lincolns, were every bit as good as the European cars. They're just so well built. Heavy chrome, heavy metal. You know, they're not making them like that anymore at all.
Here's one of my least favorites. Is it? Yeah, the old three four mark two. It is. The power steering pump's built on the back of the generator. So anything you got to do to that, you got to take the whole thing out to do it. The electrical systems are just any little corrosion is a nightmare. They had cloth covered wires. They'd get shorts in them all the time. The switch gear would go out. They knew they needed to fix the reliability problems. They started using GM as a supplier. Yeah, after that, when Ford bought them, they really fixed all the problems. Good or bad, the Jags were always good. Oh, yeah. Cars. They, they look good sitting in your driveway. And leaking oil in yeah, that Yeah, marking your territory. Brenny, man, it was really good to see you. Thanks, a lot Ted. of fun. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Shannon, as always, it's really fun to see you. Come back and see me. I want you I to will. come over to the dark side. I want you to start messing with American stuff, because I need someone like you that can help me with these cars. Uh, I know a little bit about them. Your little is more than most people know in their lifetime. Yeah. Bye, guys. Yeah, won't be so long next time. Thank you. Okay. I just got a call from Charles Johnson, the former Marlin's great catcher, and he, uh, he's got a Bentley convertible, Mulliner, Azure. Charles is a neighbor of mine, and I've seen him cruising the car, and I've been a little envious wanting it. So he's ready to sell it today, and if he hits the number, I'll buy it. I've been knowing Ted for a lot of years. Uh, we neighbors. I was always wondering, who is this guy with all these cars? I never knew him, never met him before, but one day I had a chance to meet him in a grocery store, and we got to talking and realized we're neighbors. Our relationship built from there. Dad, what's going on? What's going on, Charles? Good to see you, How man. You doing, man? Nice to I'll see you. I'll tell you what. How you feeling? Yeah, feeling good, feeling good. You're Never seen you with tennis shoes on before. The same color, huh? But yours are the real deal, you know what yes, I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. I got a bad month. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Got this nice Bentley for you, Ted. Runs good. Oh, it runs excellent. Definitely, it's a Ted car. I love these convertibles. Yeah. How you like the color? Black as a crow and ready to go. <laughs> I like it. I like the chrome wheels, uh -huh. too. You ought to clean him once in a while. I know Ted is a tough bargain. I know he's going to bargain really hard with me. I know he's going to really fight to get it down um, somewhere around 60 or so. I'm going to probably start Ted out at probably 70. But he's going to be a little tough on me, but I got to start at a high set and come down a little bit. I think he read my eyes that I like the car. I don't need a strategy with him. He doesn't need the money. He's obviously here because he's done with the car. If he's not going to beat me up, I'll own the car and drive it home tonight. Charles, I like the car. I thought you would. Yeah, you know I like I this kind of car. I thought you would. <laughs> what do you want? What, talk to you. Ted, and I know we're pretty close, and I know, I know you're playing the violin and everything else, but I'm going to 70, Ted. You know, in my head, uh -huh. right off the bat, the number 50 is what hits me that I'm liking. I could probably go a pair of nickels, 55. I'm thinking 65. I don't want to walk away from the car, but I don't want to buy it where I can't make a profit. I know what you're going to do, Ted. When you sell this car, you're going to say, hey, the former baseball player Charles Johnson drove this car. And you're going to make an extra 10,000 bucks on it. So now you nickel and diamond me for $5,000? Charles? Charles, you're fooling yourself. I know what you're going to do, Ted. I am. I am. I'm proud that I'm proud it's your car. But I ain't paying more than 60 grand than if it was Babe Ruth's car. Listen, Charles, you're my buddy. But I'm done at 60. So shake my hand and stop beating me up. All right, Ted. What's right. the deal? I figured that. All right. <laughs> but you got me. You got your number. I know you got your number. I know. It's a deal. I know you're going to really enjoy this car, Ted. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm going out in it tonight. I'll take you up to a steakhouse if you want to get something good. We can do that, Ted. It was a tough deal. I knew Ted wasn't going to be very difficult. I still feel like I won the deal. Ted gets his nice Bentley car, but at the same time, I'm able to go get the truck I was looking for. I know it's probably very unusual for me for somebody to beat Ted, but being neighbors, I know how he operates. I'm happy with the deal. I'm really glad and I'm honored that Charles came to me with the deal. You know, he could have gone anywhere, but he came to me, and I like that. I actually, you know, thought 60 would be the end of the world for me. I couldn't pay more than that. So, you know, I mean, I'll be able to use this car a year or two and get 65 or six back. So it's like a free car. I'm very happy. Ted has a pretty cool uh, shop going out here. There's uh, a lot of cars. I think my favorite car I saw so far is the uh, Avanti. It's not very fast, but it's uh, pretty cool looking. These originally were built by Studebaker okay. in 1963 and 64, and that was the end of it. And they were so popular that two or three companies went into production, called it the Avanti 2. And three or four companies folded, and they changed a little bit, and they kept making them. They kept trying, but they never really, never really made it. I like them a lot. Different. Yeah, I've never seen anything look like this before. What year were you born? 1998. She was born in 63. So this car was like 36 years old, you know, while you were being conceived. <laughs> so, so 
you shouldn't know about this, but yeah. but it's great. It's history. Yeah, you know? it's definitely kind of yeah. futuristic looking. Yeah. He's talking about how most of these cars do zero to 60 in eight seconds. I bet our tractor trailer can go faster than that. Yeah, I think I'm ready to uh, show him what I got, and I'm ready to flex my uh, new style muscle out here. I'm scared about some races, some big championship races, but not this one. I'm not too worried about Ted. So do we finally find the car that can break eight seconds? No. I really hope you find something soon because, uh, let's see. Oh, you have the car ready? All right, I'm gonna get up front and go get, go get all suited up. The car ready? Yeah. Get suited up. Yep, you'll see. I'll meet uh, you up front. We're racing my cars, aren't we? After I showed him the Avanti, he said something about getting his car ready to race me, and then he took off. And that's not what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm gonna pick two of my cars and make it a fair race. I don't know what he's got up his sleeve. Marcus thinks he's gonna get me. Marcus thinks a lot of things. All right, he's underestimating his boss. He's not gonna wipe me out. He's a kid, and he's gonna lose. Ted's a pretty interesting uh, character. I think he's pretty confident in his driving skills, but uh, now he's in my ring, so we're gonna see what happens. I think he's in for a bit of a surprise when I show him what I got. So you ready? Yeah, am I ready? Yeah. Come on, let's go find you a car to drive. Are you nuts? Ernie Jr. shows up in this race car thinking I'm gonna put one of my old sleds against this. That ain't happening, brother. No. My Avante uh, cannot smoke his tires. It smokes a lot, though, but not its tires. It smokes out the back. <laughs> 